President of the Central African Republic, Your Excellency Mohamed Bazoun, President and Head of State of the Niger Republic, Your Excellency Mohamed Idris Dabi Itno, President of the Transition Military Council of Chad, President of the Republic, Head of State, Your Excellency Mohamed El Menfi, Chairman, Presidential Council of Libya, Honorable Ministers from Lake Chad Basin Commission member countries, the Executive Secretary of the Lake Chad Basin Commission and Help or Mission of the Multinational Joint Task Force, Ambassador Momo Nuhu. Excellencies, Ambassadors, and Heads, Diplomatic Mission accredited to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you to the 16th session of the Summit of Heads of State and Government of the Lake Chad Basin Commission holding here in Abuja. I thank you for taking time out to personally attend this meeting. Despite other competing national and international engagements at this time of the year, your presence here today is a clear manifestation that we share in the Lake Chad Basin Commission. It also affirms the depths of the relationship between our countries. I am particularly glad to note the return of the State of Libya to achieve, to activate participation in the activities of the Commission. This is a positive step in the quest of our sister nation to rise beyond its current travails and to engage in the Committee of Nations. Together, we shall collectively pursue our shared objectives of joint development of the Lake Chad region. Your Excellencies, today's meeting provides a platform to holistically review our collective efforts at sustainable management of our shared heritage, Lake, the Lake Chad, and to reinvigorate our efforts at ensuring peace and stability in the region. It equally provides us with an opportunity to reflect on the journey so far since 2018, when my dear brothers bestowed on me the task of steering this unique organization, an honor for which I am grateful. My dear brothers, in the last four years, the Commission, and indeed the region, witnessed several challenges. However, with your support, we rose to the task of addressing them. As my mandate as Chairman of Summit of Heads of State and Government of the Lake Child Basin Commission comes to an end, I am proud of the great strides we continue to collectively make to ensure that we ultimately restore the Lake Chad region to its once enviable state as a hub of economic development. Our sustained sacrifices at restoring peace and stability to the region and to enable the people in the area to return to their normal lives and activities are highly commendable. During the period under review, we intensified our efforts at ensuring that the drive to revitalize the lake charge through the inter-basin water transfer project attracts regional and international attention. I acknowledge the concerted efforts of the Commission in consonance with our partners 
towards giving life to this laudable and all important project. The progress has been made towards procuring the services of a world class firm to conduct in depth feasibility study on the improvement of the hydraulic capa capacities of the major tributaries of the lake and to improve the retention capacity of the lake itself. This is a first and most important step towards ensuring that the project is executed in conformity with international best practices and that the solutions we seek today are sustainable. It is also heartwarming to note the various interventions that have been carried out through the Commission to complement the developmental initiatives of our various governments in the region. Initiatives such as the Lake Chad Emergency Development Program, the program of the rehabilitation and strengthening of the resilience of the socio-economical systems of the Lake Chad Basin, Lake Chad Region Recovery and Development Project, as well as the regional strategy for the stabilization, recovery, and resilience of Boko Haram affected areas of the region are worthy of mention. The Lake Chad Basin Commission, through these interventions, has improved the revenue generating capacities, resilience, and productive capacity, capabilities of the people of the region, most of whom are engaged in primary production, adding value to them and enabling them to take control of their means of livelihood. Furthermore, through the regional stabilization strategy and its implementing components, the people of the region affected by the Scrooge of Boko Haram have continued to receive the support they need towards ensuring that they effectively return to their normal homes. Your Excellencies, you will recall that following the demise of our dear brother, His Excellency Idris Dabi Itno of Chad, in April 2021, I, under the umbrella of the Commission, convened an extraordinary and a large summit of heads of state and government of the region on the 25th of May 2021 to review and consider the situation in Chad. This was aimed at ensuring stability and a feasible transition in that nation. and several measures, including appointing an, an accomplished diplomat, Ambassador Babagana Kingibi, in June 2021 as a special envoy of the Lake Child Basin Commission to facilitate the transition in Chad. Through his efforts, I have remained actively informed of the situation in Chad. Accordingly, I wish to reiterate to the government and people of the Republic of Chad our collective commitment to actively work with them to navigate the processes of the transition in that country to a, success, to a successful conclusion. My dear brothers, the threat of Boko Haram terrorism in the Lake Chad area no doubt brought to the fore the imperative of enhanced collaboration among the defense forces of the region in the face of a common aggressor. I am pleased that through the multinational joint task force, we responded to the challenge, proving beyond reasonable doubts that with the requisite commitment and determination, the region can solve its challenges in the best ways possible. The multinational joint task force has indeed become a model 
breaking physical barriers and affirming the workability of the common approach to conquer challenges in the area. Permit me, therefore, to pay tribute to the untiring efforts of the officers and men of the multi-joint task force and our various national armed forces who continue to make remarkable sacrifices in the fight against terrorism in the region. The efforts and memories of these gallant soldiers, some of whom have paid the supreme sacrifice in the line of duty for the survival and restoration of stability to the region will never be forgotten. Your Excellencies, during the period under review and with your support, we have sustained efforts and funding to the multinational joint task force to ensure that it delivers on its mandate of ensuring safe and secure environment in the region. You will recall that consequent on the deteriorating security situation in the region, the extraordinary summit of the 15th December 2018 held here in Abuja directed the conduct of continuous operations to completely eradicate the scrooge of Boko Haram terrorism from the region. I am glad to inform my dear brothers that in keeping with the decision, the multinational joint task force has since then successfully conducted three major operations. Operation Ancient Tafki 1 and 2, and Operation Lake Sanity 1, with the fourth one, Operation Lake Sanity 2, being planned. The next phase of the operation will take cognizance of lessons learned from, being, from previous exercises and effectively consolidating the gains attained by preceding operations. I am glad to note that during the execution of Operation Lake Sanity 1, regrouping terrorists in the Lake Chad Islands were effectively decimated. Your Excellencies, it must, however, be stated that despite the successes recorded by the gallant troops of the multinational joint task force and the various ongoing national operations in the region, the terrorist threats still lack in the region. Regrettably, the situation in the Sahel and the raging war in Ukraine serve as major sources of weapons and fighters that bolster the ranks of the terrorists in Lake Chad region. A substantial proportion of the arms and ammunition procured to execute the war in Libya continues to find its way to the Lake Chad region and other parts of the Sahel. Weapons being used for the war in Ukraine and Russia are equally beginning to filter to the region. This illegal movement of arms into the region has heightened the proliferation of small arms and light weapons, which continues to threaten our collective peace and security in the region. There is therefore the urgent need for expedited collaborative actions by our brother control agencies and other security services to stop the circulation of all illegal weapons in the region. Your Excellencies, although terrorist threats have been significantly decimated in the region, it is worthy of note that military actions alone cannot effectively win the war against terrorism. There is the overriding need to complement military operations with the provisions of sustainable development projects that will ameliorate the living conditions of the affected people in the region. Government presence must be positively felt in the area to restore the confidence of citizens in the ability of the state to protect them and provide basic infrastructure 
to all. It is in view of the foregoing that the implementation of the regional strategy for the stabilization, recovery, recovery and resilience of the Boko Haram affected areas of the region must gain further attraction without any delay. I am glad to note the development, causing, and validation of the territorial action plans for the eight Boko Haram most affected territories of the region. These action plans are the basic building blocks for the implementation of the strategy for the developmental needs of the people of the area. While we command these initiatives, we must immediately commence efforts at their operationalization. In this regard, I urge our partners to continue to support us as we redouble the ongoing efforts at developing the region to win the hearts and minds of the citizens in the area. Your Excellency, the Lake Chad region is indeed faced with a complex security situation that is highly dynamic, constantly changing, and increasingly influenced by the impact of climate change and other variables, including, sadly, some external factors. These factors have made it imperative for us to regularly review the development and counterterrorism strategies that are operational in the region. We must continue together to proffer ingenious solutions to the challenges confronting us. We must, through the Commission, continue to make concerted efforts to provide the desired leadership, ownership, and ensure that our experts and the troops are adequately motivated and supported to achieve our objectives. We must strive to continue to view our region through the lens of equity, fairness, diversity, and inclusion. It is imperative that we all see ourselves reflected in the kind of leadership we provide for the region. We must continue to support and to contribute to the success of the organization. We all must rise and face the challenges of the region headlong in order to deliver the, right, the bright future we envisage for our region. Your Excellencies, although budgetary concerns remain a challenge for all member countries, considering the declining global inflows and the increasing demands, we must, however, never lose sight of the vision of the founding fathers of the Commission. We must continue to strive and make collaborative efforts at upholding the ideals for which the multinational jail stake force in its near 60 years of existence has continued to pursue. To our gallant troops in the field, ensuring the safety and stability of the region, we commit ourselves to sustaining the ongoing counter-terrorism efforts by providing you with the requisite needs to function optimally. I wish to assure you that your welfare would continue to remain our priority. I urge you all to rededicate yourselves as we take the final push towards eradicating terrorism from our region. Together, we shall restore and transform the Lake Chad region to its former glory. Your Excellencies, dear brothers, as Chairman of the Summit of Heads of Government and State of the Lake Child Basin Commission, I commend and thank you all for the vibrant solidarity and hence strong cooperation and support we continue to share. 
I equally express sincere gratitude to our partners for the support they continue to offer us in our joint collaborative efforts to fight the challenges that have hampered the sustainable development of the region, particularly climate change and terrorism. Together, we have shown that, we, that with commitment and with desired efforts, we can achieve success. We therefore must continue to remain committed to ensuring that the diversity in the region continues to be a source of strength and positive cohesive force for the people of Lake Chad region. My dear brother presidents, we must remain unrelenting in providing the needed political and material support for the Lake Child Basin Commission Multinational Joint Task Force in its efforts at delivering regional initiatives that will revamp the Lake Child and revitalize the socio-economic activities of the region. The fight against Boko Haram and other forms of criminality in the region must remain issues on the front burner of discourse in the region. I thank you all for your support to me as chairman of the Summit of Heads of State and Government of the Lake Chad Basin Commission and call on you in the spirit of true African brotherhood to extend same support to my successor. I also wish to thank the Executive Secretary of the Lake Child Basin Commission and Head of the Mission of the Multinational Joint Task Force, Ambassador Amon Manuhu, and his team for their efforts at delivering on the mandate of the Commission. Keep the lofty ideals of ensuring that the people of the region optimally benefit from the resources of the region. I wish us all fruitful deliberations for the betterment of the Lake Child Basin Commission and the Lake Child region. I thank you all for your attention. <laughs>